What is up, everyone? Welcome on into PixWise Playbook Turkey Day Preview presented by Superbook Sports. And we are feasting because we have three games going on on Thanksgiving Day. This is Jared Smith, wrong way pointing. Jared Smith, Tank Williams, it's backwards and we're making it work, guys. <laughs> but it is Thanksgiving. We hope everyone's having a great holiday so far. Let's break down the Bills Lions to start it out. This spread right now, Bills laying. Nine and a half points. That total is set at 54 and a half. Um, first game to be thankful for of the week, my Detroit Lions going for their fourth straight win. Say what? Say it louder for the people in the back. They got the dub against the Giants in week 11. And the Bills back on track after winning against the Browns in Detroit last week. But, Jared, I'm coming to you first. Why didn't oh. the Buffalo Bills just stay in Detroit for three days? We talked about this on Let's Bet It. I don't want to offend your michigander soul but <laughs> there's things to do in detroit honest. guys more than in buffalo probably how about you ask tank tank if you had the choice of going back home for two days or staying in detroit for four thanksgiving week what would you choose i think thanksgiving is the time to be around family and so i think the guys would probably appreciate yeah, kind of being true. at home with the wife and the kids and other folks like that before Head back off. And then another thing, too, the flight isn't that long. So no. maybe that, that played right. a part into it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and staying in a hotel just for that long and you're in Detroit for no reason. <laughs> okay. <All laughs> I had to get right, that jab in. It's in there, bud. Get that jab in. Okay. I'll say you put it in. Just a little. <laughs> I know the Lions have had three wins in a row, but none of them have necessarily been against any great teams. They It was good for them beating the Giants, but the Packers and the Bears have a combined 7-15 and 15 record this season. And you look at the Bills' offense. They're scoring 30-plus points in each of the last two weeks. Lions have the worst points-per-game defense in the league. Jared, is this a spot where 9.5 isn't too many points? Yeah, the, I'll be honest. I'm a, I've got some red flags popping up here with Buffalo. And it's not like mm. abandoned ship, like sound the alarm, but it's, you know, we're starting to see some cracks in that impenetrable defensive armor. They've given up 56 points in their last two games. They're 26th in EPA per play over their last two games. And they're allowing opponents a 51% success rate on dropouts. So the secondary, and you could call it, Overall, their defense is playing a little bit under expectation. Call it the difficult conditions, maybe, against Minnesota, good offense. Then they go on the road where they're supposed to be at home and all the, you know, the hubbub surrounding that travel game last week with the snow. And, you know, maybe you could make some excuses for them. But I think this is a team that, as good as Josh Allen is, is still very much a defense-first team. And their defense has kind of been letting them down a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Tremaine Edmonds, key linebacker. Um, out this week, groin injury. That's a guy that's huge, stopping the run underneath in coverage. I think Detroit's going to have a lot more success offensively with him out. And the Lions defense, which was dead last in EPA per play weeks one through eight, trending up in the top half of the league now over the last handful of games. So you're starting to see two teams that are way on opposite ends of the spectrum early in the year starting to gravitate a little bit now closer to the mean. So you could absolutely make a case that the market hasn't fully caught up on this Lions uptick and not fully caught up on the Bills downtick. But that being said, I'm sorry, Lauren, I am contractually obligated to tell you this stat. The Lions have lost 15 straight games on Thanksgiving. That's yep, really I know funny. that because I watch them every year on Thanksgiving since I was a wee little gal. <laughs> Tank's trying not to laugh right now, but it's sorry. hard. You it's hard. your sorrows and you stuff your face with stuffing and turkey and just hope that makes you feel worse feeling too full than the loss that the Detroit Lions gave you. But I digress. <laughs> oh, I've it's got bad. This. Like, I think I read, I read something on social media where someone was talking about the life of a Lions fan on Thanksgiving. And basically it was that where you just try to eat your food during the time where the Lions play won't make you throw up. And then the only thing that makes you feel better at night brunch. is like watching... Yeah, it's like watching like Kirk Cousins and the Vikings like catch an L in the late game. Yeah, seriously. Like what's worse, the pain of being too full or the pain of seeing your team lose 15 oh, straight man. Thanksgiving games? I don't know. But nine and a half points, Tank, we say this. It's a lot of points. 
I feel like yeah. Detroit plus nine and a half could be a good bet to make because the Bills have only won one game since week six by 10 plus points. And they're 0-5 against the spread in their last five against NFC North teams. Something to keep in mind. Do you feel like maybe it could be a good spot with the Lions getting the points at home? Uh, for sure, actually. Um, I think you're kind of spot on right there. <laughs> Would I bet it? I'm not sure yet. Let's just kind of talk me into something. So I think about how I felt the Lions were going into New York last week and that the Giants were just going to kind of manhandle them because of where they were situated in the NFC East and having to stay ahead of Dallas and some of those other teams. And then the Giants just wet the bed. And also the Lions at the same time played solid ball. Like Aiden Hutchinson is a monster. Like this dude is making oh, like splash plays. He, yeah. Yeah. Like he, He's not on TJ Watt's level, but he's making those types of plays where he's not only like getting Looks up to the quarterback, but he's like catching the ball, making interceptions and things like that. Like you Insane. see some similarities with that. And so I just look at the energy that the Lions are playing with. So they're coming off a big one in New York. Now they get to go home and play on Thanksgiving, which is like one of the biggest games that you can play in where you know everyone's watching you and you get to highlight your talents against a Buffalo Bills team that seems a little vulnerable. And so this yeah. game to me kind of reminds me of the first game of the season, Philadelphia versus the Lions. Mm -hmm. How did that game turn out? Philadelphia came away with the win, but it was like 38-35. And the way that that Buffalo yeah. defense has been playing and the way that that Lions offense is trending, the one thing that I thought about when I saw this matchup and thinking about that Philly game was this, over. It's like throwing a frozen turkey into hot oil. The explosion is coming on Thanksgiving morning. So one thing is this, like I'm, I'm not sure if I really talked about it, like Josh Allen has had pedestrian numbers, like only 197 pass yards in the tub last week. They kind of leaned on Devin Singletary. When you're playing bad ball, you kind of have to take some pressure off of them and then build a solid base. Like you have to put the bottom in. I think the bottom is in, is in now, and now you get this matchup against that Lions defense. And even though they've been playing better over the past couple of weeks, I don't think they've seen an offense like the Bills, especially coming in motivated like this. So I think they explode, and I feel like the Lions can kind of keep pace a little bit. I feel really good about this over. I would prefer for it to be a little less points, but I feel like Vegas is hip to the game, and that's why they got it thrown up at 54 and a half because they can see this game turn out a lot like that Eagles-Lions game as well. Yeah. Forward down the field, a Lions team that will not yield. I'm a little pitchy this morning, <clears throat> this afternoon, but you know what? Let's go Lions. Yeah, fight wing. The Lions go. have a fight song. They're one of the few teams oh, yeah. in the league that have a fight song. I didn't know oh, they had yeah, a fight song. Fight I knew song. Washington had a fight song. Touchdown. I mean, they have one. They just rarely get to sing it. it is, you just don't hear it that much, right? <laughs> All right. We're moving on to the Giants in Dallas. Um, the team that the Lions, I'll just say it one more time, took advantage of last week, the New York Giants. The Giants are taking on the Dallas Cowboys. That spread right now is also set at nine and a half. Total is at 45 and a half. I hate both of you guys so much right now. We're moving on to the Giants game. Um, the Giants have lost two of their last three after a hot start to the season. The Cowboys coming off of an absolute ass whooping that they handed the Minnesota Vikings. Mm -hmm. Tony Pollard couldn't be stopped. 189 yards, two touchdowns. This is the second game of the season between these two teams. The Cowboys won back in week three with Cooper Rush. Um, Dallas's defense, Micah Parsons tank, that dude this past week holding the Vikings mm -hmm. to only three points. Three points. They have forced 16 takeaways on the season, and the Giants have coughed it up five times over the last three games. So I feel like that's something that the Cowboys are going to want to take advantage of a little bit, coming from a defensive guy like you. The crazy thing is this. Like, you would expect when you beat a team down the way that the Cowboys beat the Vikings down on Sunday, at a certain point, you just kind of let off. And even if you don't let off, the Vikings have Kirk Cousins, whatever you feel about him, but you have Jeff Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, Dalvin Cook, mm -hmm. Adam Thielen, like all these guys that can make plays on offense, yet and still they were able to hold them to three points throughout the entire game. And then you look at this divisional matchup and you say, okay, like the Giants have Saquon. Daniel Jones has been okay with his arm. He's been using his legs a lot. That's kind of been the game changer for him. Wondell Robinson has some nice games, but now he's out with an ACL. Uh, Darius Slayton has played well for him, but he doesn't scare you. Um, who are they going to roll in now? Kenny Galladay? Like some of these other cats, like, you're not really worried about that. 
Um, so on paper, you're looking at, mm, can I trust the Cowboys? Still don't know if I can trust the Cowboys because we see what they've been doing throughout the year where they can just dominate a team and then mm -hmm. they'll lose to a team like the Green Bay Packers. So do I trust them at minus nine? If that defense plays the way they did against the Vikings, you should be able to. I just don't know if I can really bet on it. Um, so when you feel like strongly about some of these other games, I think this may be one where just because this is a divisional rivalry and there's so many different things that can happen, like Saquon could just play out of his mind. And then that just mm -hmm. kind of equalizes everything. Um, I would probably stay away. I don't have a strong lean, but I feel like if the Cowboys, that's the thing. If the Cowboys play how they did last week and if they can be consistent with that, that defense can overwhelm you, the offense can overwhelm you, and they should blow out every team, honestly. But I just don't know yeah. if we can count on that on a weekly basis. So this game will speak a lot to what we will get from the Cowboys moving forward into December and then making a push towards the playoffs. Yeah, Jared, do you have a strong lean in this one? Nine and a half, a lot of points. But the Giants are 2-9 and nine against the spread in the last 11 meetings between these two teams. Yeah, and one in ten straight up. I mean, they've just been dominated by Dallas. So, of all the games this week, this one is giving me the most bullish indicator in the market. It moved off of seven, and it just blew through that key number. Now we've reached ten. It's moved three points in the last week, mm -hmm. and the total also has moved up from forty-three through the key total of forty-four. 44 is the most landed on total in the NFL over the last decade. So four is the equivalent of three in the, the spread world. And it's blown through 44 and now getting 45. So the, the market is very bullish on the Cowboys and very bullish on the over. Now let's dig into some of the matchups. Well, Adoree Jackson's out for the Giants. Their best cover point. Well, that's bad news because you're facing CeeDee Lamb and you're facing a Cowboys yeah. offense that probably feels a little disrespected after – what we saw last week and the prior week, like the, no one's really talking about the Giants right now. You're looking up at the or the Cowboys right now. You're looking up at the Eagles in the NFC. Obviously, of other teams in the NFC like the Vikings that are kind of that talk of the talk of toast of the town. And we saw what what the Cowboys did to them last week. Also, the entire Giants offensive line is hurt this week. I saw one of the reporters, I think it was Schefter, sent out a tweet on here are the Giants offensive linemen that are not going to play, and it was like the entire line, <laughs> like four starters. And you're facing Micah Parsons and the Dallas defensive line that just is relentless. This game has, the, the, I'll be honest, I think the Giants are a stone cold sell the rest of the season. And I, I think it will take a whopper of a number for me to even consider getting to the window on them. And I think when you look at the matchups here, they can't defend in the secondary because their best cover corners out and they can't block a lick because their four starting offensive linemen are out. Where is the matchup edge for New York here? I mean, is Danny Dimes going to just run all over this team? I, I don't see that happening. So this is a bad matchup, bad matchup. We end Turkey day with a little dessert. The Patriots heading on up to Minnesota to take on the Vikings who'd want to totally redeem themselves. After last week, they're playing two and a half points at home. That total is set at 42 and a half. The Pats had an exciting end to an extremely boring game against the New York Jets. And rookie Marcus Jones' punt return gave them the win. The Vikings had that loss against the Cowboys. They got their butts whooped. I didn't think that loss, though, would be like that bad. Kirk Cousins threw for a season low 105 yards. These are two teams right now with two different momentums. The Pats are back in the AFC playoff picture after last week's win, and they're going to want to keep that alive tank. Do you feel like maybe as a road dog they could come down in here and upset the Vikings, or do you think the Vikings just have a chip on their shoulder after getting absolutely whooped last week by the Cowboys? The Vikings should have a chip on their shoulder, but man, Bill Belichick is a mad scientist. And over the past few weeks, I understand the offense that they played against. You have the Colts and you have the Jets with uh, Zach Wilson, but they've only given up six points over the last couple of weeks. And this is a game where I'm not sure if the schedule guys planned it this way, but oh, the Vikings have the last game on Turkey Day. Prime time Thanksgiving football with Captain Kirk at quarterback, which narrative is going to come through? It's going to be one of those things where you always hear about how Kirk Cousins plays in primetime games, 
Or is he going to totally redeem himself with the with the bounce back against the New England Patriots? But Bill Belichick is really good at taking away what the opposing team does best. And I feel like in this matchup, understanding the pressure that's going to be on Kirk Cousins, he's going to say, all right, I see what Dallas was able to do. Like, Dalvin Cook had an okay game, but he didn't have any explosive runs. Maybe we take away Dalvin Cook, make sure you can't lean on that run game. We'll double Justin Jefferson and then just kind of live with one on coverage on Adam Thielen, TJ Hawkinson, and force Kirk Cousins to go out there and make plays with all those guys. And can you go ahead and beat us like that after four quarters? I don't know if they can. They could, possibly. But I think for me, just thinking through that scenario that way, I probably lean the under here, just given the fact that mm. Bill Belichick is going to have that defense right. They're going to frustrate that Minnesota offense. We could say some positive regression from the Vikings offense, but I mean, that's not saying a lot. They only scored three points last week. So even if you get a couple more touchdowns or something like that, I still feel pretty good about Bill Belichick holding the clamps down on that offense at least for one more week and this being a low scoring affair for that primetime game on Thanksgiving. Yeah, Jared, how do you feel about this one? And I'm also going to ask you about this game and also your Turkey Day teaser because I know you have one on Turkey Day. TDT, hit us with it. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give you a little cap on this game and then I'll give you my Turkey Trot 10-point teaser. I do this every Thanksgiving. It's a terrible bet. I don't recommend anyone make it for large amounts of money, but it is my favorite Thanksgiving tradition minus the food. Um, so we've seen a little bit of a battle on this game. Moves off the three, gets down to two. That's where the Minnesota money stepped in, pushed it back to two and a half. Uh, totals kind of been fluctuating between 42 and a half, 41, then back to 42, 42 and a half. So, uh, you know, again, unlike the Cowboys-Giants game, not a clear market direction here. I, I could see this one probably closing two and a half right at around 42, and I don't see it, uh, you know, pushing in, in, in either direction. But the matchups, I think, do favor New England, especially defensively. And – you want to talk about styles make fights. What did we just see? Christian Darisaw, which by the way, the concussion protocol in the NFL, I don't know how he was allowed to return to practice two days yeah. after suffering a concussion on Sunday. Then he plays in the game on Sunday and suffers a second concussion. Ugh, that's a that's that's tough. So obviously Darisaw out this week, and that is important. Why? The second Christian Darisaw went out, it was open season hunting wabbits and Kirk Cousins was the wabbit and it, it was it was <laughs> ugly for example <laughs> i'm sorry I, I had to go there for example the left tackle blake brandle <laughs> who would back up to christian darisaw gave up two sacks and four pressures in a half of football one half two sacks and four pressures and so now you get new england's defense which is right there in terms of pressure rate again against a Vikings offensive line that has shown inability to protect Kirk Cousins and their best left tackle, one of the best left tackles in the league, not playing. <laughs> that is a tough ask. So the other side of the ball, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I, have no, I have been befuddled and tanked. Maybe you could shed some light. The New England offense is like the Bermuda Triangle. I have no idea what their identity is, what they're trying to accomplish. It just looks so disjointed every week. Some weeks it's great. The running game can't be stopped. Other weeks it's not great. Like I just, I don't know what we're going to get on the Patriots side of the ball offensively. And this Vikings defense at home after a 40 point drubbing, you would expect there to be some starch there. So I think the Patriots mm -hmm. keep this close, but with the number being under three, eh, don't see a ton of value betting it on either side. I like it. Okay. Turkey day teaser, Jared. Before we go, quickly, let's get to it. Ten pointer. So a ten point teaser minus one twenty. So we're gonna move the Lions from nine and a half to nineteen and a half. We're gonna move the Cowboys down from ten to a pick'em, and we're gonna move the Patriots from plus two and a half to plus twelve and a half. And we're gonna hope for a couple of close games, and of course the Cowboys blow out of the Giants. That's kind of the direction I'm going in. Two close games and one blowout in Dallas. There you go. Turkey trot, 10-point teaser. go. Turkey Day. Terrible guys. bet. Let's have a great holiday. Fun. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tate <laughs> Williams, Jared Smith, Lauren Jabara. Best of luck with your bets. We'll see you guys for week 13. Fix Playbook.